wife of the late prophet T.B. Joshua finally breaks her silence, revealing how she met her husband unconscious prior to his death. Hello lovely people, welcome back to my channel where we do all sorts of free life stories happening around the globe, especially Africa and particularly my country Nigeria. Thank you so much for tuning in. In case this is your first time of joining me, my name is Zeni and you are watching Zeni's Thoughts. She revealed the man of God spent about three hours in prayers before the last service on the mountain and appeared to be very healthy. She said he never showed any sign of illness or worry. So I have to read it exactly the way she wrote it. She said, Afterwards, he came up to shower and I left him to have some time to prepare for service as, as worship had started. Few minutes later, he stepped out for ministration. While ministering, he spoke about a time to come and a time to leave. His statement were spiritual and suddenly he left the stage and went to his inner chambers. I waited a few minutes and thereafter decided to check on him. I met him sitting on the chair like someone reflecting but unconscious. I quickly beckoned on his disciples who came and tried to revive him to no avail. Of a truth, he went home to be with the Lord and left us with a message, watch and pray. So from every indication, it shows that the man of God knew or sensed or felt that it was time for him to go be with the Lord. From all the testimonies from his wife and all the church members, it showed vividly that the man of God knew that his time has come. Because a lot of critics since he died have always said, yeah, if he is a prophet, he, was, he is, or rather he was prophesizing about other things. Why didn't he prophesy about his death? One thing people do not know is that there is no how he could have come out to say it categorically that it's time for him to go be with the Lord. Of course, he did say it, but he was saying it spiritually and a lot of people did not understand it. In several cases, I mean, he said something concerning going home and, you know, pray that you know when you go. I will play a, quite a few videos for you guys to see that the man of God actually knew that it's time for him to go home. Which was the reason why he said that people should pray to know when it was ready for them to go and be with the Lord. Anyway, no matter how much we paint it, no matter how much we talk about it, what matters is that the man of God has peacefully gone home to be with the Lord. And with the kind of testimonies surrounding him, we can see that he has really made an impact on people. So, for those who are saying that he has been prophesying about other things but he couldn't prophesy his own death, or those who are calling him a fake prophet, and those who has come out to say all sorts of things about him, even the ones who did not, who still did not and still do not believe that he's gone, he left a message for everybody. He said, watch and pray. He died peacefully. I mean, according to what the wife said, he was never sick. He was healthy. That means he died an unpainful death. He is prepared, I think, to be with the Lord. How prepared are we? Death is inevitable. It can come to anyone at any time. Nobody knows when he's going to knock on his or her door. How prepared are you? Rather than sitting down judging a dead man, why don't we get ready for ourselves? Get ready, prepare yourself in case it is your turn next. So that people will also have good testimonies about you the way good testimonies are flying around about the man of God. This is all I have to say. Nothing more. Prophet T.B. Joshua is gone. 
gone to be with the Lord. He was married to Mrs. Evelyn Joshua Balogun and they both have three daughters. So my beloves, I'm going to play a few clips from him indicating that he actually knew that his time on earth was coming to an end. With that, I'm going to leave you until next time when I will bring another story across to you. Don't forget that it is still I, Zane, thinking out loud. It is Zane's thoughts. I pray for you today that when it is time for you to depart, you will know in Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Leave it for God. My name is Leave it for God. <laughs> Prophet, leave it for God. So that's it. That is me for you. I know what I'm doing. You think I cannot fight? My name is Living for God. I just look at you. Huh? Sometimes when, when it's too painful, I will say, ah, where? That doesn't where? Because I will not allow this to affect my future. And the future is very clear. clear and bright. So why should I allow anything to, to stain that future? And the only way they can stain it is to attack you, to insult you. Your... This is the message from Jesus. The Christian does not consider death to be his end, but the end of his trouble, the end of tribulation. 
whether you die young or old, no matter the nature of death, death is sure to come. What matter is the grace to continue living year after? What matter is the grace to continue living here after? We need to be sure that we are ready to depart. Are you ready? Will you be ready when the Lord shall come? Will you be ready when the Lord shall come? I will be ready. I will be ready. I will be ready when the Lord shall come. I will be ready. I will be ready. I will be ready when the Lord shall come. Will you be ready? Are you ready? That is a question. Continue to trust in God is the only way to get ready for the thing we are not ready for. Trust and know there's no other way to be happy in Jesus. Trust and know Continue to trust in the law is the only way to get ready for the thing we are not ready for. The question you need to ask yourself, are you living each day as if it were your last? That is a question. Are you living each day as if it were your last? How are you using your life? I mean, how are you spending your life? Because the greatest way to use life is to spend it on something that will outlive it. For instance, to love someone more dearly every day. When you look around you, you see someone who is in need of your love. You will see someone who is in need of your help. You will see someone who is in need of your strength. You will see someone who is in need of your time to help a wandering child find his way. I mean, to help widow, widowers, often the less privileged and the unsaved, to follow truth, like the book of John 14, verse 6, as blind men long for light to keep our heart fit for his holy sight and answer when he calls. This is our tax. Let me leave you with a million words. Live each day as if it were your last. Someday, you will be right. Imane. Thank you.